Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and in today's video I'm prepping a doll and constructing the costume. For the most recent video I posted a, pur a purple tattered fairy doll I made with a Twyla Monster High doll. So in the video you're going to see me removing the hair, removing the face paint, and constructing the dress. So the first thing I did was cut the hair super super short and then I scraped the inside with a screwdriver and that kind of pulls it out of the holes for me a little bit easier. And then that way it's much easier to pull the hair out from the neck hole. And I'm using a hemostat to do that instead of needle nose pliers because it fits in there much better. Now I'm removing the factory paint with some pure acetone and cotton pads. And you can see that 100% pure acetone really eats away at your skin. So once she's cleaned off, all the, all the face paint is removed, I'll wash her with soap and water. And onto the dress. So I'm going through my stash of ribbons and trimmings and lace and dyed fabrics, just trying to kind of curate a grouping of different fabrics that I want to use for the costume. So I'm using, going through these um, strips of dyed fabric that I made, I just cut some cotton fabric and dyed it with some I think it's some Tim Holtz ink and water and then heat set them with a heat gun. So I'm just pulling out all the lavender and purple colors that whatever I feel like will go well with her skin tone. So this is all going to make the skirt, so I'm just choosing purplish colors. Purplish and purplish pink seem to work well. Then I'm going through my lace bits. I keep all of my tiny bits of trim that won't fit around a cardboard piece in, they, these are just kind of little scraps and I keep them in these clear pencil cases. And I'm pulling out little bits that I want to add to the little bits on her skirt. Then I'm making a base skirt out of just a piece of lace that I gathered. And then I'm laying out the colors of, or different dyed fabrics just to get an idea of how I want that to look. And then I'm going through some other trimmings to see what other pieces and elements I want to add. I decided to get some fabric and cut it up as well as some lace and just kind of lay it out to visualize how I like how I'd like it to look. Some of this I used and some of it I didn't. I want them to look just very tattered and, and different shapes. So some of them I cut straight across, some of it I cut at an angle, and then I'm adding some different laces from my collection as well. I want a mix of white and ivory and just different shades of white along with the purple. I'm cutting them all the same length, but not being too particular that they are the exact length. So here I've got my bundle of fabrics, and I'm going to stitch those to the base. But first I'm going to take some of the fabric pieces and just add some additional elements. I'm adding little collages of different textiles and laces using some, some needle, with using a needle and thread. Just cutting it down to fit the little strip. And I just kind of play with it and just work kind of organically, just trying out what I think may work. I want the stitches to show on some of these, so I'm using some thick black thread. 
and then just collaging the piece with an extra piece of lace. This is actually some lace from my collection that my sister brought me back from Belgium. So she brought me, brought me back two big pieces. So one of them I decided to cut and use in different, different costumes. I thought that it would be fun to share some of it and then the other one I'm saving. It's just the most beautiful, delicate lace piece. So I just wanna get the most out of it. Then once I've added the fabric I want on that particular piece of dyed fabric, I want to add a little charm. So I'm just going through my collections of charms and I'm seeing some of these little, a couple people have asked if the charm on the dress is from Death, Deadly Hollows, uh, Harry Potter, and yes, it, I believe that's the symbol for that. I just happen to have a bunch of these little charms. I'm using this tool called a crocodile, <laughs> and I'm making a little punch hole in the bottom of one of them and adding a little eyelet. This is just a really good tool for eyelets, makes it very easy. I just add the eyelet to the bottom base and then I I guess it's, it doesn't look as easy in this video as it actually is but I pop it through that hole and then add it to the one side of the crocodile and then give it a squeeze and then the eyelets on there so there's no particular purpose for that I just thought it looks cute at the bottom of one of the pieces so just added it. I like some to add a, a bit of metal and elements to some of the pieces. This one I'm going to add a jump ring so I can add a little bell or charm at the end of this piece and I'm just going to sew that on. And it doesn't have to look perfect. I like to just keep kind of raw edges and just to kind of keep with the overall look. And then I'm just gonna go do one stitch all the way up the top, kind of gather the fabric just to give it a little more interest. Kind of measure it out to match the size of the other pieces and then I tie the stitch off. Now don't worry too much when there's a lot of fraying and extra threads sticking out. I kind of think that adds to the look. And 
And then here are my tiny bells and I'm going to add one to the bottom. I do that by taking a couple pairs of pliers, opening up the jump ring and looping the bell on and closing the jump ring back. As you can see, making these little dresses for this collection is very time consuming, but I just enjoy it so much. The more details, the better they seem to look to me. So again, I'm just taking some other elements and layering them to see how I want this piece to look. And it's just a piece of lace and a little flower from another piece of black lace. It helps to have a huge collection of ribbons and trimmings, which I do. <laughs> I just love different fabrics and different textures. Here I'm just kind of creating a collage with some of the dyed fabrics and a little piece of a sort of a burlap kind of trimming. And I'm going to go through my button collection to match up a button that I think will go well. So I just pick out a few and test them. I guess I can't decide between those two. <laughs> So once I have them layered on there, I'll stitch the pieces on, starting with the button. So here are all my little pieces. I ended up using some more of that lace from Belgium and added a bead in the middle of it. And here are some of the little collages and bells. So to the base of the skirt, I added a few pieces of fabric along with some lace and sewed those all on and then stitched on the few pieces that I just walked through. Then I have some pre-made corsets and shorts in here, so I'm pulling out the top that I want to go with it. And I'm choosing this set of cream or like ivory colored shorts and top. And just trying to decide if I want a black top or an ivory top or purple. I decided to go with ivory for this one. And I just added some trimmings and some 
lace to make it look like a corset. just trying to match up what would look best and I ended up going with some natural fibers so I used the twine in purple and stitched that around the edges and like I said I did some stitching in the front to look like a corset and I did the trim all the way around and added a magnet in the back for her wings and I also added a fabric bead so I hope you enjoyed this video this doll will be available at Megacon in Tampa in September of 2018 after the convention, I'll likely have a couple of fairies in our Etsy shop. The link is in the description box below.